everyone. Welcome to ET's Facebook page. I'm Denny Directo. I'm Ashley Carlson. And let's toast to the end of award season. The end of Almost. award season. The beginning of, of the Oscar end. weekend. Exactly. <laughs> but the beginning of the end. It's been a long road to the Academy Awards. We are tired, but we are here to break down what to expect from Sunday's big award show. And let me tell you, we've done our homework, right? We've watched a lot we of We have. Movies. Oh my gosh. I, can I just say really quickly, I'm so proud of you right now <laughs> for finally watching Lion. I was like, there's a couple left on my list that I need to get to and line was one of them but you guys uh we're in for a really big award show with some huge races so we're gonna break these down and please don't let us do all the talking if you disagree with us and if you're rooting for someone in particular let us know in the comment section below uh we'll call you out but we also want to hear from you guys so let us know okay yeah should we dig right in all right the biggest races you guys let's kick off with best actor best actor okay Casey Affleck has been winning a lot this yes. season, so a lot of people are predicting him. But I don't, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I saw both films, both uh, Manchester by the Sea and, of course, uh, I'm talking about Denzel Washington and Fences because Casey is the presumed front runner. However, Denzel is really giving him a run for his money. Uh, first of all, let's not lie. It's Denzel Washington, so he's good in everything, right? Mm -hmm. But this is such a tour de force performance, and I know he's won before, but he is on the heels of Casey, in my opinion, and I could see in what world this would be his to lose. What about Ryan Gosling? Do you not think he's a front runner? I don't know if Ryan is a front runner. I don't. I mean, a lot, La La Land, of course, got a lot of love. It's going in with 14 nominations. I don't think this is the category that uh, they will take it. I mean, it's be I mean, it's between Casey, who gave a really emotional and poignant performance, versus Denzel, who's a Academy favorite. And like I said, he just really like blazes through that screen. And my money's on Denzel. Okay, I was gonna say that too. I was gonna ask you who you're going for. Yeah. And I'm gonna say Denzel as well. Don't you think? Like, yeah. uh, Denzel, of course, beat him at the SAG Awards too. So I think he does have an, a little bit more of an edge going And he was this. so shocked there. I was like, dude. He even called out Casey. Denzel Washington. <laughs> exactly. I think he even said, he was like, you know, the young guy's been winning all these and he and he told us backstage actually when we were there that he was talking about Casey. So that'll be a race to watch, but my money's on Denzel. Okay. Best actress. Ooh. <laughs> I have a lot to say. You go first. Okay. Okay. Well, Emma Stone has been winning a lot, or she's been kind of the darling of this award season, and I absolutely love her, but it has been bumming me out a little bit that Natalie Portman hasn't gotten enough recognition for her role yeah. in Jackie because she's obviously playing Jackie Kennedy, and she is amazing. I mean, if you watch an interview with Jackie Kennedy and then you watch this film, it's almost uncanny. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing, and I, I want to see... I want to see Natalie Portman win. I really do. And there's no denying it. Like it's, it's I mean, the, the the proof is right there. She's in the entire film. Like that film is Natalie is Portman's, Natalie Portman. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just her. So I could, I, I would like to see her also accept another Oscar pregnant. That would be kind of cool. But come on, Emma Stone. I mean, she's been on a hot streak, like you mentioned. She picked up the BAFTA recently, the SAG Award. She has the Golden Globe. Um, so I don't know. I have a feeling it's gonna be Emma. I know. Um, I know. I know. I think, and 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 not that Emma wouldn't deserve it. She's great. I just <laughs> really want some recognition for Natalie Portman. So I'm gonna go with her. I'm gonna go Dark Horse, Natalie Portman. I mean, what if honestly, there's like the biggest surprise of the night is like I I Isabel Huppert just like takes it away from Emma and Natalie Portman. I mean, I'm gonna be. That upset. did happen. It's happened. Oh yeah, it happened at the Golden Globes. <laughs> yeah. You're totally right. <laughs> but yeah, no, that'll be a fun race to watch too. Um, but you're going Portman. I'm going Portman. I'm going Stone. I'm gonna do Stone. Want to put money on it? Yes. Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, best Supporting Actor. Okay, we love this category because there's two particular actors we've been rooting for this entire award <laughs> we season. We have, like... <laughs> right? Yeah. And both so deserving, by the we've way. We've been their mascots we this have... entire <laughs> award season. We've talked to both of them. Like, I, I'm going to start. Go. I've been rooting this entire award season for Mahershala Ali in Moonlight. Uh, you know, there's a lot of argument about how the fact he's not in a lot of it. However, when he, and I'm not trying to spoil anything, but, you know, he is not in a, most of the movie, but his presence is felt. Like, there's, they reference his character a lot. I mean, honestly, Mahershala, you know you're my dude. And he just, like, moved me so much in that performance. And, of course, he's it's been a banner year for him. And he just had a kid yesterday. We learned that uh, the news is up on etonline.com. Come right now, he had a kid. It's a big year for him, and I would love for him to just like close out the year with that cherry on top of an amazing Sunday uh, and, and take home that Oscar gold on Sunday. I mean, I think that really seems to be in the bag, but right. I am going to say 
that I love Dev Patel. <laughs> Dev Patel in Lion. I mean, when I watched that film, that his performance stuck with me for days, weeks, months at this point. I mean, I can't, I still, I mean, I know you watched it the other day. Yeah. I, could, I could not stop thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you felt that way, but I thought his performance was so amazing. Um, he's obviously playing a real life person, so right. I, I don't know. There's just so much in that role and the emotion in the last, you know, ten minutes of that movie. I just, ugh, you're I right. Loved it. And I will say that Dev, and I'm gonna admit it, um, right here live on Facebook, Dev made me cry when I watched that. Mahershala did not. Not that's like any prerequisite to win an Oscar. You gotta cry. You gotta cry. <laughs> yeah, you gotta cry. But I'm just saying, like, I could see in what world Dev would all of a sudden just sweep in and, and swoop in and grab that that trophy, especially uh, he beat out Mahershala at the BAFTAs. At mm-hmm. the BAFTA Wars, and I, but I see Benny over here riding Mahershala or bus. I'm with you, brother, for <laughs> sure. And then we've got uh, Andrew Garfield did a really good job, super underrated. I mean, uh, Haxel Ridge, his performance right. in that movie is really, really great. And that, his role specifically hasn't gotten a ton of love. Right. I mean, we've definitely heard a lot about the movie and Mel Gibson's directing job, but Andrew Garfield in that movie is so good. So many good performances yeah. this year. Like, I, we're, I, you know, we're only talking about two per category, but like, man, did these people earn those nominations. Oh my gosh. And Andrew's one of them for sure. Absolutely. Um, but moving right along to Best Supporting Actress, I mean, I think this is the lock. I mean, there is no doubt about it that uh, Viola Davis in Fences was incredible. She's incredible in everything, but she's also swept almost every award this season, and I'd be surprised if it did not go to her. Like, I mean, that's hers to to, to lose. I agree. At the same time, um, nobody else in this category would be a bad... Like, I I wouldn't be disappointed if anybody else in this category won. I mean, Naomi Harris in Moonlight, Nicole Kidman in Lion, Octavia Spencer, Michelle Williams. I mean... They're all amazing performances, but I do agree that Viola Davis probably has. You know what I mean? And she has actually addressed this with us and and, and uh, this whole uh, uh, the the whole media run of the the, the award season. Um, she has talked about how it's almost unnerving how people keep telling her she's a front runner. Right, because then if you if you don't win, it's, that's what she said. Like, like if you don't win, it dang. just it sucks that much more because we all said that she's a front runner. But right. I mean, like I said, it's kind of. I feel like this is the lock, and it would be a pretty amazing story. You know, she won the Tony for this same role when uh, it was on Broadway. So, and it would be her first win. She's been nominated three times, and like I think it's time to give Viola Davis a, a Oscar. I need that speech. I need that moment. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, because I don't know. You know, it might be a very political Oscars, and I'm not saying she'll be exempt from that. But we'll get a very moving speech that we're gonna be quoting for the rest of the year. So yes, yes, I need, need that moment. It, need it. Best picture. Let's talk about the big one. I mean, who are you rooting for? Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long list. Lion. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I, honestly, Lion was my favorite movie of the year. I've said that out loud so many times. Yeah. Do I think it's going to win Best Picture? No, I really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's. Um, I think it's going to be La La Land. I mean, yeah. I think. I think that's been kind of the darling of the awards season. We've oh, we've said that a million times, but yeah. I I do think it's going to be La La Land. But it could also be Moonlight. Right, exactly. They're saying that it's between La La Land and Moonlight. And to be fair, like to your point, you know, La La Land really has been the darling all award season. And I think it's really rare when you get that many nominations, 14, that you don't win Best Picture. Because I believe it tied with Titanic and All About Eve who all, with 14 nominations. Uh, and those two pictures won the big award. So I'd be surprised if La La Land didn't win. But you know, my heart of hearts, I really loved Moonlight. Does it... <laughs> I really love we Moonlight. love an underdog over here. Really so I think that's what we want to see win. It's so true. But yeah, no, I'd be surprised if La La Land didn't take it. Um, And in that same vein, uh, Best Director is probably between those two directors as well. Absolutely. Damien Chazelle and and Barry Jenkins. Um, Damien Chazelle, I know, right? Can we see his name? I'm so tired. Uh, (laughs) Would be the youngest winner. Yes. Which, I mean, doesn't he, when you, when I watch him, I'm like, that's like, that was all of us. That little film nerd, you know, who's like, had this crazy outlandish idea for a movie and then made it happen. Mm-hmm. And ha- and got Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone to star in it. Yes. So, I mean, I, I'm I, in this race, I'm actually rooting for Damien. I agree. Yeah. I do agree. But, you know, some of those shots in Moonlight are so incredible. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, 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 of course, if uh, Jenkins wins, he will be the first African-American winner to win Best Director, which is also a pretty amazing feat. So hats off to both those uh, filmmakers Absolutely. and those directors. Like, so awesome. What are you guys talking about over here? Rhea says Moonlight has her vote. Yep. 
Uh, and Denzel, if he wins again, yes, thank you for reminding us, this will be his uh, second award for that Fences role. Uh, Denzel and Viola both played those roles on Broadway, won the Tony, um, and if you guys haven't seen Fences, those two were freaking amazing. You won't see two better performances this year, so I'm rooting for those two for sure. Those are the big races. Those are the big races. But we also have to talk about the fashion because it's the Academy Awards. This is where people really turn it out, you know, and, and it's where a lot of fashion houses and designers are are like just chomping at the bit to get a star <laughs> to wear one of their their designs on the red carpet. Oh my because gosh. it's once in a lifetime kind of like yeah. um, event, you know what I mean? I was j I literally just did an interview with Riz Ahmed before yeah. I got here, and he's presenting, and he was like. Yep, I got my things picked out, but luckily someone else is doing it for me. But, <laughs> right. but yeah, he's got it picked out, ready to go. But some people were really who, excited. I know, like, who you, uh, we want to know who, who you guys do you want to see. Yeah, who are you looking forward to seeing? Because honestly, Natalie Portman's like pregnancy fashion. Yes, that's like one I'm kind of looking forward to 100%. because sh it's been a little hit or miss. I don't know. Right, it's been. You know, I had a hot take. Did you like the Golden Globes look we're looking at right now? I like that. Yeah. I absolutely like that. Um, she's really pregnant too, so it's like that. They're <laughs> really trying pregnant. to, you know, they're really trying to address that bump. But when she was pregnant, the last time she uh, was at, the, or when she won the Oscar, um, I thought that was an amazing look. And mm -hmm. so I'm really excited to see uh, what they put her in. Uh, we, I think we have another look from her um, dress at the SAG Awards. Oh, this is the one I didn't like. You didn't like this one? No. You thought it was a little matronly, right? It was just, yeah, it was a lot of fabric. <laughs> well, she's a pregnant lady. That's you know? a, no. She's trying to be comfortable, I think. No. But her hair and makeup's always on point. Um, yes. Yes, so so excited for her. I'm also excited for Naomi Harris of Moonlight. She's been crushing it. Oh, my God. She's been crushing it. If she doesn't win the Oscar, I think she'll win Best Dress because she has been so amazing on the red carpet. Oh, yeah, look at oh! that. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, the Golden Globes. And I, at the SAG so Awards. I know, right? Slay me. She's so gorgeous in person. I've talked to her a couple times this award season, and she's so good. Um, but, of course, Emma Stone, another fashion darling. You know, we, we were recapping fashion from the Golden Globes, I think, and yeah. um, somebody was saying, I want to say it was Courtney, was saying that Emma Stone's been kind of playing it safe this season. Maybe mm. it was Katie that said that. But <laughs> I really want to see, yeah, I agree. I want to see her do something daring for Oscars. Maybe she's saving it. Like, maybe she's saving it for... This night because she night. it's the big night it's the big award like she has a I'm oh, sure she has a little that. that's not playing that's good that's really pretty no but I know what they mean by that like maybe we'll see a pop of color you know some trends we're expecting speaking of pop of color pop of color <laughs> oh Miss Viola Davis look at that yellow blah blah boom yes this is a woman who plays to her skin tone she said that to us actually at the SAG Awards she goes you know I want something to 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 highlight me and my glow and I'm like you shine on girl. <laughs> So oh Viola gosh. Davis is someone I'm also very excited about. Um, Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman can never do any wrong. Right? Oh yes, what did she? She did the parrot that one time. She I love that. Oh look at that. That's awards. so pretty. Look at that with her like her skin tone. She just knows how to. God, were we talking? Do the makeup for it and everything. Oh, there it the is. Bird. There's the parrot. <sighs> that's someone who takes a risk. I loved that. I did too, actually. See, we need to see more of that at the Academy Awards. I think you know. Yes. Shake it up a little, folks. <laughs> Shake it up, guys. Were we talking about how Nicole Kidman and Lion like she needed those wigs because she's just so beautiful and it's kind of distracting. Like she had, a, you needed to kind of suspend your disbelief. Yeah, so, so like you gotta tone it down, girl. Tone it down. Like, throw in her curly wig. Nobody he's gonna believe you're a real human. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, but you guys, moving on to the actual telecast, I mean, we're in for a, a treat with a lot of amazing performances by some people who could make history if they win Best Original Song. Lynn manuel Miranda. <laughs> Superstar. He is nominated for Moana for um, Best Original Song, and he could become an EGOT if he wins. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Yes, and he will be the youngest ever if that happens. He's 37 years old. The only uh, um, Robert Lopez, who won for Frozen, right. was 38 years old, I believe. So yes, Isn't and it's the fastest right. to become an EGOT. I think he would he would have been doing it in nine years. So if he wins it, he collected all those trophies within nine years. Within nine years. Epic. I mean, if there's anyone who's deserving of that, it's Lynn Manuel. And talk about a hot streak. Like coming off of Hamilton, I think he even said he was writing some of these songs while he was still doing Hamilton. Yeah. So balancing those two, two completely different worlds, but also creating works, bodies of work that people are just obsessed with. Like we loved Moana. Oh my how, gosh. How many times have you seen it now? I've only seen it once. Oh, I saw it three times. Did guys, you really? I saw it three times. And those songs are so damn catchy. I listen to the soundtrack non-stop. Ah, it's so good. But, you know, we actually talked to Lynn about the uh, the, the, the well, chance of him. It's so funny you talked about how busy he was because I was I was with him last night at the Oscar Wilde Awards, which is um, J.J. Abrams' event celebrating people of Irish heritage. And... Um, he, I, I was like, I have so much to ask about. Like, do you have 25 minutes for me to talk to you? Because I'm like, oh, Mary Poppins and the Oscars and Hamilton. And 
But anyway, I did talk to him last night, and he is performing at the Oscars, so I'm going to give you a little peek of what he had to say last night. Mm. <laughs> You're much. singing, right? Yeah. What, which, do you, can you, what song are you singing? Well, we're, we're performing How Far I'll Go. Okay, yes. My level of involvement is a secret. Okay. But you'll see soon. You'll see oh, in like two days. Do your welcome. What's he gonna do? Yeah, are no, you no. Excited? Have you been rehearsing? I mean, how's no, it going? No, we, we rehearse for the first time together tomorrow, so I'm really excited. Oh my god. There's my nose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was you. But yes, they are rehearsing, possibly, right now. And, and you know, he doesn't sing that song in the film, right. so I'm really excited to see what his level of involvement is going to be. Yeah. Because he kind of teased. He was like, "I'm in it." But I'm, he's kind of like teeing her up. I don't right? know. I'm really hoping those Oscars producers also don't hold back and make it like an epic set to you. Because come on, we need the water, the flowers, oh, right? We need her on that ship. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm looking forward to that performance for sure. I mean, he has some stiff competition, though. And a couple of music stars, Justin Timberlake, but also one John Legend. Who? who I, you know, John Legend. <laughs> John you might have heard of him. Uh, <laughs> he was, of course, in La La Land this year. Um, and he sang a couple songs. However, he is subbing in this, uh, uh, he's subbing in on Sunday for Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, who solos in La La Land. The songs got nominated, but they're not performing. And I actually talked to John at the NAACP Image Awards about the performance. He teased it a little bit and also explained why he's the one to do it and not Ryan and Emma. Take a look. Yes. Uh, he says he's roasted nobody, so I think you're good, John. Uh, talk to us about this big Oscar performance. You're performing a La La Land medley, right? Yes, we're so excited about that. I'm proud to be part of the film. And uh, I think Emma and Ryan wanted to focus on you know, just enjoying it. Enjoying the night, so they put me to work. <laughs> well, you're no stranger to the Oscar stage, right? Yeah. What do you have you up your up your sleeve for this performance? Well, we want to honor the songs. You know, they're beautiful songs written by Justin Hurwitz and the team, and uh, we're so proud of the film and the score and all the songs that were part of it that we want to celebrate that. And then, of course, you got the Grammys tomorrow. Good on him, by the way, to step in and do that because Ryan and Emma, y'all suck. Like, I was so ready for you guys to perform at the Oscars, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, as a fan, I like wanted to see you guys perform those. Like, by the way, you don't suck. You're actually amazing. Oh like, my I gosh, love you, I but, love Denny Shade. But I really wanted, <laughs> didn't you want to see them perform the songs? Absolutely. But I also understand, like, the pressure and the fact that you're also nominated. Like, you that's that, that's a lot going into one night. Yeah, Emma sounds probably like, I just want to get drunk and sit down and, like, <laughs> hang out and not have to get on stage right? and perform. I've got enough stress to worry about. <laughs> no, uh, for the record, big fans of Ryan and Emma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big fans of them. But of course, John Legend is John Legend. He's used to performing. He performed at the Oscars when he won for Glory. So that'll be an exciting, exciting performance too. But, <laughs> You're uh, funny. I just, you know, I just wanted to see that happen. I agree. Um, you know, there were, one thing people are talking about too is the In Memoriam because of course we lost so many huge, huge stars and a lot of actors. Um, and so, you know, expect some Something really sad. It was just announced by the producers yesterday that Sarah Bareilles will be performing the song, which I mean, she's gonna make us cry. I think Ashley. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> she's an amazing voice, and like you said, yes, yeah, so many huge losses this year. I mean, I mean, go, let's go through this list a little bit. Gary Shandling. I know, right? There's so many. Patty Duke, Prince, Carrie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds, Gary Marshall, Gene Wilder, Mary Tyler Moore, John Hurt, like. So many people. So many people. It's going to be a long segment. It's going to be a long segment. <laughs> right. It's going to be really sad. And yeah. I, I, but, you know, paying homage and, and honoring all those stars, I think, is so fitting, especially right now. Because, yeah. like, I, like, we lost so many artists and so many great bodies of work. So look forward to that. And I will say that host Jimmy Kimmel has even made light of it, saying it might be the longest segment of the actual telecast. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, we actually caught up with him yesterday. And uh, all of that is actually on ET Online. But he is teasing a lot of fun stuff, including this rival with Matt Damon. I mean, oh, yeah. they have long been rivals playing it up on Jimmy Kimmel Live and with press. Uh, so expect, and, and Matt Damon is a producer on Manchester by the Sea, so he will be in the audience. I'm looking forward to a little Matt versus Jimmy little thing on Sunday. How about you? Oh, absolutely. He should bring it, though. He should be pretty funny. <laughs> like I said, he's got... I heard about something he did, but I don't know if we put it up yet, so I'm not going to say anything. I know, right? He has some things up his sleeve. He did something to Matt Damon, but I don't know if we're allowed to say it, so I'm just not going to say it. <laughs> it's that, and also, it's a family affair, I believe, Like, because his wife, apparently, is one of the writers, too, for the sh for Jimmy Kimmel Live, but also for the Oscars, and so um, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully some roasting on his part, uh, but that'll be a lot of fun, and we'll see it all go down on Oscar Sunday. Absolutely. Should we get into some of these oh, comments? Oh, yes. Um, Ed says, I hope that Viol Viola Davis wins. She was wonderful. Yes. Okay. Garden says, John Legend brings life. Always, right? And plus, we'll get Chrissy Teigen there, too. So, 
They both bring life. <laughs> I just want a Chrissy Teigen red carpet moment. I love it. Uh, Laura saying Moonlight, another incredible movie. Mahershala Ali also deserves that Oscar. Um, I couldn't agree with you more there, girl. Uh, but we'll have to just find out on Sunday for the big show, you guys. It airs live on ABC around 5.30, uh, live coast to coast, actually. And we'll be holding it down here, tracking every move. In fact, you guys will have another Oscars preview Sunday right before the actual telecast. And then another one after recapping all the biggest moments, the speech. Uh, Ashley is covering it like you're going, you're going to be in every live I think I think so you're so if you live. like this <laughs> keep coming back come and back for more exactly <laughs> and there's so much more tonight um, we're actually hosting the, the, the Entertainment Tonight show from the Oscars red carpet tonight so check your local listings but guys we've got a lot more coming ET online your way so stick with us for all your Oscars goodness and we're going to take a nap we're before take Sunday a nap. thanks for joining us exactly thanks for joining <laughs> us guys bye <laughs>